This movie is about the biggest volcano eruption of the 21st century in terms of lava output. And the biggest in Iceland in about 150 years. There are about 30 known central volcanoes, or volcanic systems, in Iceland. The Bardarbunga system is one of those systems. Bardarbunga, the second highest mountain of Iceland, around 2,000 meters above sea level, is one of the most active volcanoes of Iceland. The volcano is placed at the northwest of the Vatnajökull ice cap and therefore covered with ice. This ice cap is about 8,000 square kilometers and covers 8% of all land in Iceland. In history there have been big eruptions in these parts in Iceland. Large parts of land are covered in relative fresh lava continuously shaping the country. This map shows where in prehistorical and recent times lava flows have covered large parts of Iceland. In another movie I will be doing the historic eruptions of Iceland, and there have been a few. The Elgia eruption in 939 and the Lockie eruptions in 1783 are amongst the biggest in recent history with 20 cubic kilometers and 14 cubic kilometers of lava. These numbers do not mean that much, so to give you some idea on how much volume this is, imagine the following. The complete island of Manhattan, filled with lava up to the height of Chrysler Building. Only six building in current New York would be visible above the lava. All what you can see here would be filled by lava. That is what 20 cubic kilometers of lava does. And Manhattan measures 61.4 square kilometers. In August 2014 a big seismic swarm gave warning of upcoming eruption. On 22nd of August measurements done with GPS have shown displacements on the surface of over 14 centimeters. In comparison, Iceland on the whole is spreading at the rate of about 2 centimeters a year. The ice on top of the Bardarbura caldera showed big cracks during late August. Big worries were in place with these historic eruptions in mind. We all remembered the 2010 eruptions of Ayafjallajökull were a period of volcanic events, although relatively small for volcanic eruptions. Caused enormous disruption to air travel across Western and Northern Europe over periods in April and May 2010. From 14th to 20th April, ash from the volcanic eruption covered large areas of northern Europe. About 20 countries closed their airspace to commercial jet traffic and it affected approximately 10 million travelers. Luckily something very special happened. Later this effect will be explained. You can see clearly how the seismic activity is moving north which is away from the ice cap. At the 29th of August the first fissure opened with a length of 600 meters. The eruption was located about 5 kilometers north of the Dingyuko Glacier, about 15 kilometers south of Mount Oska. It stopped after 4 hours. On the 31st of August the eruption really started. The discharge rate of lava was confirmed to be 300 to 500 cubic meters per second. This is footage shortly after the big fissure opened. <laughs> As of September 3, the Icelandic Met Office reported that the new lava field spanned an area of 7.2 square kilometers, slightly larger than Gibraltar. On September 5, the Icelandic Met Office reported two new fissures had developed south of the initial eruption site. These two new fissures are closer to the ice cap, just 2 kilometers north of its edge, so concern is growing larger than the eruption will start happening subglacially potentially causing glacial outburst floods as the lava erupts under the ice. And large ash plumes reaching high in the sky. Enjoy some of this great footage from this eruption which was taken at the 4th of September.
Holoron has spewed more lava in 10 days than any Icelandic volcano since the 19th century. As of September 9, 2014, the new lava flow was 16 kilometers long and covered about 20 square kilometers. The outflow in the beginning was enormous and the lava field grew very fast in the first 30 days. At the end of September it was already 44 square kilometers as size. In October the eruption continued and the lava field expanded to more than 71 square kilometers. In December the flow subsided a little and by Christmas time the lava field was about 80 square kilometers. After this most of the new lava went on top of the old lava and the field did not expand that much. The amount of lava was very big. 1.4 cubic kilometers of lava was thrown out of the fissures. And now the big question. Why was there no eruption under the ice cap? An underground channel was formed on the side of the magma chamber through which the magma leaked out 41 kilometers away from the caldera. In the months that followed, the immense lava lake formed there. At the same time, the ice sheet on the volcano collapsed by the same volume. If we would try to scale it in the volcanic explosive index, base scale, it would be a scale 5. Because it was a fissure eruption it was not officially categorized. This is the reason why this eruption was peaceful and it did not bring that much damage. We were lucky, but the danger of a big eruption under an ice cap remains in Iceland. The pictures of winter wonderland with amazing northern lights are almost unreal. For now enjoy these last few pieces of footage from this fantastic eruption in which nature shows her might and power.